Hi, my name is Roman Khan. I'm going to teach you how to use Minitab by taking you through a worked example from my book, Minitab Exercises for Green Belts. By the way, that's available on Amazon. I recommend you work along with the example by downloading the data set from my website, RMK6 Sigma. And by the way, that's free. All the details are given below. Let's go when you're ready. This is the second of three videos on regression. The first video was on simple regression. This video is going to cover multiple regression, but it's going to look at how to handle predictors that are correlated. If you want to work along with this exercise, you can download the data sets from my website, rmk6sigma.com. And if you want to do the full green belt course on Minitab, you can go to my new website, thinksixsigma.com. Now I might get complaints about this if I didn't tell you, but you can do the complete regression module for free at thinksixsigma.com. And it's there for a limited time only. So that's about a one hour long video showing you about simple regression and multiple regression, giving you all the background to what multicollinearity is and how it affects our regression models. So all of that is there at the moment at thinksixsigma.com. Exercise 9.04. The prestigious Scottish golf club, St Tim's, want to help their members develop a better golf swing. They have identified four continuous predictors and one categorical predictor that they think are significant to the response. The distance of the drive. The data for this study is in worksheet golf swing. So the predictor columns are as follows. Angle is the angle to the ground that the ball has been hit. Speed. This is the speed of the driver as it is swung. Center line. This is the absolute value of the angle the ball is hit away from the center line to the target. MIS. This is the maximal isometric strength of the person hitting the golf ball expressed as a percentage. Then finally, hip mobility. The person hitting the ball is given a hip mobility score ranging from 1 to 4, where 4 is high hip mobility. So the response column is distance for this data study. So your task is to analyze the data and report the results on the following to St. Tim's Golf Club. Ensure the following points are covered in the report. Number one, demonstrate that there are no concerns with multicollinearity. If there are concerns, modify the predictors in the most appropriate way. Number two, is there a significant relationship between at least one predictor and the response? Number three, what is the strength of the relationship in terms of R squared? Number four, which predictors are significant? Number five, are there any significant interactions or quadratic terms? Number six, show the regression equations. Number seven, can the study be validated through the residuals? Are there any issues? Number eight, what's the longest drive that can be achieved using the highest levels of the predictors available in the study? What are the suggested predictor levels to achieve this? And number nine, produce a contour plot marking the longest drive on the contour plot. This is the data from Worksheet Golf Swing loaded into Minitab. So we have six columns of data. Column 6 is our response data, distance measured in metres. Column C1 is angle, and that's the angle to the ground that the ball has been hit. C2 is speed, this is the speed of the driver head as it swings. Center line, that's the absolute value of the angle of the ball is hit away from the center line to the target. MIS stands for maximal isometric strength, and that relates to the person hitting the ball, and that's expressed as a percentage. Hip mobility also relates to the person hitting the ball, and you get a score from 1 to 4, where 4 is high hip mobility. Hip mobility is discrete data, so we should treat that as a categorical variable. So our task is to analyse the data and report back to St Tim's Golf Club. There's nine things to do all together. And number one is demonstrate that there are no concerns with multicollinearity. If there are concerns, modify the predictors in the most appropriate way. Multicollinearity is the kryptonite for multiple regression. How do we check for it? Well, it occurs when your continuous predictors are correlated. So we can check for correlation between the continuous predictors. We do that by clicking Stat basic stats go down to correlation we select our continuous predictors click OK and it doesn't take a long examination of the matrix plot to quickly see that MIS and speed are highly correlated they have an R value of 0.932 so this is bad for us 
None of the other continuous predictors are correlated. The highest R value is 0.178 between center line and angle. So the one we need to worry about is maximal isometric strength and speed. And that makes sense, doesn't it? The stronger you are, the quicker you can probably swing that golf club. We can also look at the VIFs, variance inflation factors, if we run the regression model using the traditional menus. So let's do that quickly now. So stat, regression, regression, fit regression model. We put in distance as the response, then we can put in our four continuous predictors. And we can even put in our categorical predictor. Then we just click OK. Then we can go to the coefficients table and we see there that the VIFs for speed and MIS are the only two that are high because they are the two that are correlated. So if your variance inflation factor is greater than five, then you're going to have strong multicollinearity and that's going to affect the results of your regression model. As I said before, if you want to learn more about the background to this, go over to thinksixsigma.com and the regression module is there for free at the moment as a taster. Remember, it's only going to be there for a limited amount of time. So now we know we've got two correlated predictors. What are we going to do about it? Well, what I'm going to do is run the regression model again, and I'm going to decide which one of the two I'm going to take out of the study. So it's going to be the one that's given me the least value in the study. Because remember, we're not adding any extra information because the two are highly correlated anyway. So they're both going to go up and down with each other and provide the same sort of value within the regression model. So I always go to the data first. Then we're going to go to the assistant regression. And I'm going to select multiple regression. My response is distance. And on the first time round, I'm going to include speed, but not include MIS. And hip mobility is still in the model. Click OK. I'm not going to spend a lot of time looking at that. The only thing I want to know is the R squared is 63.69. Now I'm going to run that again. And this time, I'm not going to include speed. I'm going to include MIS instead. Click OK. So when you have MIS in the model, you get an R squared of 57.6%. When you've got speed in the model, you get an R squared of 63.69%. So number two was, is there a significant relationship between at least one predictor and the response? Well, yes, there was because I managed to make a model. Number three, what is the strength of the relationship in terms of R squared? So as we settled with the model with strength in it, we had an R squared value of 63%. Let's go on to number four and ask which predictors are significant. So on the summary report, on the top right, you can see that angle is significant, center line is significant, speed is significant, and hip mobility. And angle squared is a significant quadratic. You can see the main effects plots for each of those variables. You can see from there that they're all significant. Number five, are there any significant interactions or quadratic terms? Well, I spoiled that one, didn't I? There were no interaction terms that were significant. Only angle as a quadratic term was significant. Number six, show the regression equations. So here we have the regression equations. We have a separate equation for each level of hip mobility. As I said before, you can see that there's a squared term for angle that's significant. There are no significant interactions. Number seven, can the study be validated through the residuals? Are there any issues? Well, to check the residuals, we go to the diagnostic report. We can see there are six large residuals, and one of them slightly far out, but it's not too far out from the main body. There are no unusual residuals. There are no patterns of the type that we see here on the right. So I'm quite happy to validate this study going by the residuals. Number eight, what's the longest drive that can be achieved using the highest levels of the predictors available in the study? What are the suggested predictor levels to achieve this? OK, so to find that out, the easiest way is to run the regression model again, but this time use optimization. So we're going to click on Assistant, Regression, and for multiple regression, we're going to use Optimize Response. We're going to have to put the predictors and the response in again, so click on Distance, and we want to maximize the response. Let's put our predictors in, so we're using Angle, Speed, Centerline, 
we're not using MIS, but we are going to use obviously HIP Mobility. And then we're going to click OK. Then we need to go to the solution report. If we want to maximize distance, the predicted value is 273 for the maximum value with a prediction interval between 221 and 325. To achieve that, so angle would be 14, speed would be 138, centerline would be 3 degrees and hip mobility would be 4. Produce a contour plot marking the longest drive on the contour plot. So when producing the contour plot, it's better to do that through the regression menus as opposed to the graph menus because the regression model has been stored. If we go through the traditional regression menu, we can form the contour plot. And it's already stored the values for us. So the contour axes will be speed and angle. And hip mobility will be fixed at 1. But because we want to go for the maximum distance, we want that to be 4. And the center line. So remember the center line maximum was 3.01. So let's change that as well. And click OK. Let's double click on that to open that up. Then maximize the contour plot. OK, now we need to mark on the longest distance, which was around 275, I believe. So click on the little cross, which is the pinpoint icon. Go into the contour plot and find the location that has the longest distance. Now here's a little game. See if you can beat my value. So at the moment, can you see it's saying 269 metres in the top left? Find where you think it's going to be the maximum value and click on that. You only get one go at this, by the way. Right, so I got 273.589. Can you beat that? Leave a comment below what your score was. Right, that concludes this example. Be interesting to see if you can and how much you beat my score by. If you want to learn more about Minitab, you can subscribe to one of my many courses on my new website, thinksixsigma.com. You can also pick up a free 365 page Six Sigma Greenbelt guide from my website, thinksixsigma.com. Let's continue to learn together. See you soon.